This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Part 1. Wealth. 13. When the narrow bourgeois form has been peeled away, what is wealth, if not the universality of needs, capacities, enjoyments, productive powers, etc., of individuals, produced in universal exchange? 14. The exchange of human activity with production itself as well as the exchange of human products with one another, is equivalently the species activity and species spirit, whose actual, conscious, authentic existence is social activity and social satisfaction. As human nature is the true communal nature, or communal being of man, men, through the activation of their nature, create and produce a human communal being, a social being, which is no abstractly universal power opposed to the single individual, but is the nature of being of every single individual, his own activity, his own life, his own spirit, his own wealth. 15. The new proletariat inherits the riches of the bourgeois world, and it gives it its historical chance. Its task is to transform and destroy these riches, to constitute them as part of a human project, the total appropriation of nature and human nature by man. A realized human nature can only mean the infinite multiplication of real desires and their gratification. 16. The resonance of egoisms has to be looked at from the point of view of wealth, greed. Developed individuals make a richer community, and a richer community makes for richer individualities. Beyond a certain stage of the development of productive forces, collectivism equals the suppression of individuality is a forfeiture of wealth for the community, just as individualism equals the suppression of community is a forfeiture of wealth for the individualist. 17. The impoverished man typical of capitalist society, the so-called greedy man, is the man who is only excited by money, who is only interested in fragments of other people, in buying their skills, their services, their products, and the rest is none of his business. He lives in a world of prostitutes, that is, a world of proletarians. He is the master of the partial appropriation of man by man, that is, of exploitation. The rich man, the greedy man of communist society, is the man who has discovered how to appropriate the richest thing around, the most interesting and valuable object, the subject, beginning with the appropriation of himself as such. The man who has socially mastered the possibility together with the necessary conditions of this total appropriation of man by man, the coherence of whose social life is the self-need of man. This is the secret of what we mean when we say, the negation of capital is the realization of real wealth, subjectively and objectively. The communist egoist, the genuinely greedy person, wants other subjects. The narrow egoist, the exploiter, only wants something from them. 18. A society rich in selves is the only really rich society. Richness in subjects, in subjectivity, in practically and creatively potent human beings is finally the only real wealth for the subject. 19. Ultimately, wealth is nothing but society itself. 20. The logic of exchange value, of commodity exchange relations, is the very logic of narrow egoism itself. In the exchange of a commodity which I own, for money owned by somebody else, I have parted with, alienated, the use value of the commodity. It is lost to me, in order that I may realize its exchange value, its money form, its general use value, that is, its expression in the form of general social usefulness or abstract labor time, which I can then reconvert into any particular use value to the extent that its production has, by my stage of capitalist development, assumed the form of commodity production. Its general usefulness, its usefulness as money, as exchange value, is here in direct contradiction to its particular usefulness, its specific use value. The logic of exchange relations in communist society, according to the inner coherence of its concept, is quite the contrary, however. The use values in whose production I participate, and in whose consumption you and I both participate, are not lost to me except if I consume them immediately, i.e. your consumption of them is not a loss for me. 
They are social use values, and society is my larger self, my necessary self, absolutely necessary to my production and reproduction. Even if I should take up the life of an isolated hermit and somehow survive at it, my changed self-activity would shortly render me a different person. Their use value, consumed directly by others, returns to me in the form of the maintained or improved creative capacity of those others in social production, in the form of the reposited or increased production of the class of human beings upon whom my reproduction depends, the single class, or rather the single global non-class of associated producers, who produce the totality of the wealth I consume, prerequisites to my production of myself. Thus, no social use value is alienated from me. Rather, all of it stays within my expanded self, accumulates there, and goes to enhance the total quality of my life. Therefore, also, within the global production planning process of the councils, I have a legitimate beef whenever asked to participate in some production which does not satisfy this logic. Any production which does not satisfy this logic is truly socially destructive, antisocial, and an anti-use value, anti-wealth. It is therefore at very best a waste of my time, that is, of my life. Anything that is not worthy to be preserved will have to be destroyed. 21. The independent material form of wealth disappears, and wealth is shown to be simply the activity of men. Everything which is not the result of human activity, of labor, is nature, and as such is not social wealth. The phantom of the world of goods fades away, and it is seen to be simply a continually disappearing and continually reproduced objectivization of human labor. All solid material wealth is only the transitory materialization of social labor, crystallization of the production process whose measure is time, the measure of a movement itself. 22. In the last analysis, all you have to give is yourself. Yourself is your only gift. If you don't possess yourself, i.e., if you let yourself be forced to sell yourself, you have nothing to bestow upon another individual, another self. In the realized society called communist society, exchange must become visibly and fully what it always was essentially, self-exchange. This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist.